Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Welcome to the very first live show for the Stitch Please podcast that was recorded on March 26, 2022 at Pike Place Market when we visited Deborah Boone's amazing shop called Our Fabric Stash. Located in the historic Pike Place Market, Deborah sells amazing fabric, new but mostly consigned pieces that allows us to think about sewing in really sustainable ways. She sells pieces online as well as patterns. We talk about this amazing coat she had on. It looks like a, um, what did I call it? A sexy Jedi. It was a really, really cute coat. And so I know she's working on a pattern for that. And I am very glad to have met her and worked with her. The Stitch Please podcast very first live show is sponsored in part by Bernina. Bernina is a sewing machine company, you know, that was made to create is one of their slogans. And I wanted to thank them for their support of the Stitch Please podcast. I also wanted to draw you all's attention to some Stitch Please guests that are also Bernina ambassadors. So when we ver- when we started out in the very early days of the podcast, I spoke with Aronica Cole in episode 53. And then just recently, a few weeks ago, well, maybe closer to a month ago, I spoke with Nefertiti Griggs or the Corny Rainbow, who is also a Bernina ambassador. And that is episode 122. Coming up in a few months, Marcia Spencer is another Bernina ambassador who will be on the show. So uh, I'm really, again, grateful to Bernina for their support and encourage you all to listen to these Bernina ambassadors who have visited the Stitch Place podcast and helped us get our stitch together. I'm also very grateful to Dr. Julie Nelson Kristoff and Dr. Aaron Colbert White from the University of Puget Sound. They, had, they were very supportive during the live taping of the podcast and very supportive with the equipment. So I'm very grateful to the University of Puget Sound for making this happen. And finally, my producer, Latrice Samson Richards, thank you so much for all that you have done to make this event happen. Latrice is fantastic with logistics as well as with the production of the episode after she's giving you these excellent logistics. And so thank you so much to Latrice for putting together what you are about to hear. So without further ado, here is the very first live show of the Stitch Place podcast. Hey, friends. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the Stitch Please podcast. Now, I do say this every week. This is a very special episode. But this episode is especially special, special, because for the first time in my entire podcasting career, I'm not podcasting at my house. (laughs) I'm not downstairs in the sewing room in the corner facing a wall recording or sitting in my special corner recording on YouTube um, or on you know, what's that called? Zoom, um, these other interviews. I get to talk with someone for the very first time live and in living color in actual real life. This is Deborah, who does not have COVID. And I am Lisa, <laughs> who does also not have COVID. And that's Latrice over there, who you cannot see yet, um, also does not have COVID. But this is going to be a special new episode as it's going to kind of do two things one I think it's going to launch the start of my travel sewing series because I hope to go more places and if you are a brand or a company and you want to support me in the sewing the travel sewing series you can send me some information and I will consider it because I vetted Bernina quite carefully before inviting them to work with me on this project and I have to say 
that the folks that I have worked with and spoken with have been really very helpful. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to Bernina USA, to Burnett USA, to the folks that work in these, in the, all the different capacities. Um, I can't, I'm not going to be able to, I don't want to forget any names, so I'm not going to say any names. Um, but you know who you are and I'm very grateful for all the support that you've given for this project. So our episode today is about our fabric stash. And I am joined today with Deborah Boone, who is the owner of our fabric stash. So Deborah, welcome to the program. It's very weird to welcome you to your own store. Um, but welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and so glad um, to have you both here in the store. And um, I'm looking forward to this being a wonderful, uh, wonderful occasion and collaboration going forward. Excellent. This yeah. is great news. So tell me, Deborah, how did you start? I know that the shop is heading into its eighth year here at Pike Place Market in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. And it's a, the, the Seattle, the market has been great. Y'all, if you have never been to Seattle, come. It is so nice. There are so many things to do. The weather is good. Um, the views are spectacular. Up near Puget Sound, they have this mountain that keeps hiding. Like I saw it the first day I got here and I haven't seen it since because it's been so cloudy. And so I'm glad I have photos. Because well, I'll, I'll tell you this. My husband and I have a thing. If the mountain shows itself, that means good people are coming to town. So I'm oh, glad. <laughs> it was really showing itself off when I flew in. I made a whole video. I was like, is that real? Yeah. Like, that was where my head was. So thank you for that. But um, tell us a bit about what, how does your sewing story begin? I tend to ask people that, like, how did your sewing story begin? What got you started in sewing? Well, actually, it was an interest of mine as a, as a young kid. And, um, but I think also too, um, in parallel with that was I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so, um, but I did know that um, if I had gotten into sewing at, at the young age of eight, I used to try on clothes. I used to design clothes um, on myself because I didn't have a mannequin. Okay. And by the time I got to high school, um, there was a sewing class offered. But I suppressed it because I knew if I got into um, an actual craft, I probably wouldn't have made it to college. So, <laughs> so it wasn't until actually I finished school and moved to the Pacific Northwest. And I lived in Olympia. And this was like 32 years ago. Okay. Yep. So it wasn't nothing to do. And sewing, it was time to get to sewing. So now you are, you're, you, now you're situated in a space where now you have nothing to distract you mm -hmm. from what sewing can bring. What were some of the first things you made? Well, the very first thing I made, actually I have it here. Um, it's in that counter on the top shelf. How many of us have um, your very first sewing project that you could put your hands on right now? I don't know if I can. I think my very first project was a tote bag made out of some white denim with red webbing. And then my spouse wrote the, our son's name on it in Sharpie. Like, that's my first project. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> Just put it away. Nobody wants to see that. You know, you know, Deborah, nobody likes to show off. Wait, wait, wait. So the store actually pays homage to the woman. The store pays homage to the woman who taught me how to sew. And um, so the very first stash I got an opportunity to, to shop in was her stash. Um, when I met her, I asked, would you teach me how to sew? Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't have time, but here's a sewing machine and a book. Go read. Yes. And so I went off and I did that and I came back to her and she said, Deborah, you did not read. <laughs> <laughs> and she got the um, seam ripper for this particular dress. And so where I had, um, this is what I made. I cannot so. believe that that was the first thing you made. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Like, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The way Thank that you. she's experimenting with um, textures and different types of fabrics on the same garment is quite advanced. It mm -hmm. looks like it has kind of a shantung um, type 
nub to the fabric, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if it's silk or not. But what I'm ex- I'm really excited about is this, this contrast. There are some mm-hmm. beginning sewists who would look at this top and think, I'm not going to touch that because that looks too complicated. That would not be Deborah's path. <laughs> So what I had trouble with was the zipper, and that's what she um, oh took out. She took out the other thing I had trouble with was um, darts, understanding darts. Yes, and then also the um, the the facing. The facing, yes. Did uh-huh. you search that facing? No, I turned it under. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Y'all, the facing is very well constructed for a beginner. (laughs) Um, And it's the fact that she cleaned it up. She didn't have a serger. So she just turned it under and it looks great. It really does. It looks great. It's it's funny that. So what made you choose a dress as your first project when you could have chosen, I don't know, a tote bag like some of us did or were told to do at sewing class? Well, in growing up, I played dress up with my mother's clothes as well as with my aunt's clothes. And so I wanted to make a garment, something that I can actually wear. Okay. And so um, that's what I did. I wore that garment for about about 10 years. (laughs) Wow. That is wonderful. I am so glad to see that. And so another question that I had was, you are also an artist Mm -hmm. and you are a fiber artist and a stitching artist. And actually one of the things, like one of the pieces you're wearing right now is something that you designed, the African samurai. Mm -hmm. I I was calling it Afro samurai after the... (laughs) The, the cartoon <laughs> series, but that is a beautiful piece. And I see it in different varieties around the store. It seems, mm-hmm. can you talk about this beautiful jacket? Thank oh my you. gosh, y'all. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you have the opportunity to, watch, to be watching this as we are recording it here on March 26th. Um, Pacific Standard Time at around 1244. Um, this episode will be published um, sometime in June, probably. And mm-hmm. the video will be released to Patreon folks as well. Again, the one that I think we're recording this. I hope the Zoom is recording. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. We're looking to see if the Zoom is recording. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, or if the Zoom is not recording then congratulations patreon peeps you got to see the live of the live show okay so my question was i got distracted by my own excitement um was about the how wonderful the afro samurai (laughs) jacket is or african samurai jacket is could you talk a bit about it and like where the inspiration came from well i have an affinity to um the aesthetic the japanese um aesthetic i'm really attracted to it and as well as my own culture So I wanted an opportunity to celebrate both. And so then the other thing, too, is I wanted something that was that can fit different body types. Yes. And but also accent um, it as well. Yes. And so in the design of it, I made sure that there was enough room for coverage um, if you needed to to have it as well as in the um, in the back as well. But let me show you. The back of it has oh. a racer back. Yes. Um, so it kind of accentuates the yes. um, back. The center, the center, the center. back seam. Yep. And then I love this uh, this kind of box pleat, this mm-hmm. inverted pleat right here, yep. which gives you a lot of room to accommodate the swing. Yep. Right. So that as you're moving. I know that's really very clever. Yep. And the, the way that the raglan back kind of allows uh, the way that the raglan back allows for um, a type of sleeve that is really forgiving in terms of giving your upper body movement. Mm -hmm. Um, And it looks uh, amazing. I mean, the way that you um, embellished it, Mm -hmm. the the bias tape that you did, did you make that bias tape? I did actually um, from one of our jelly rolls. Matter of fact, it was made from the very first jelly roll that I made for the store. Which is about oh, five years ago. Oh my gosh. And um, I made it into a fabric and then cut oh. it on the bias. Oh. So. so you took the jelly roll. Mm-hmm. And now, y'all, if you don't know, a jelly roll is a, a fabric bundle that is usually standardized at two and a half mm-hmm. inches. Yes. So two and a half inch strips that go across the width of fabric, right? And with that, and woven fabrics. Um, are typically 44 inches, 44, mm-hmm. 45, or between 42 and 45. Yeah. And 
you then cut it across with a fabric. You stack them on top. It's about 40, um, 40 strips. Normally it's, it's 42 strips. If you do it at 42 um, and a half, we do ours at three inches oh. and um, we include um, 24. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you get wider, you get more things. So it's, it's three inches rather than two and a half. And that kind of accommodates for that same conversion. So mm-hmm. you sewed all your jelly rolls into strips and then made, you sewed, sewed all the strips into mm-hmm. one big piece yes. and then you made the bias. And then I made the bias. And how, was it an issue to deal with the seams? No, um, you just need to make sure that you keep the seams open. Press the seams press open. Uh-huh, well, yeah. I'm telling you, pressing is a huge part of sewing. I hate ironing. I don't like to iron. I think ironing sucks. But pressing, pressing, I like. Because pressing is a way to bring your vision to life. And if you are serious about sewing, I don't like to lecture people because y'all grown. Do what you want. But pressing is something you will want to do. I press my patterns when I get them out the envelope. I press, <laughs> um, I do because when you press your pattern, it's true. I do it makes static thing. electricity yeah. and it makes your, you know, it makes the pattern stick to yeah. the fabric. You can then, I use weights because I hate pins, hate pins. I use weights and put those down and then you can cut with, with no difficulty. Mm -hmm. And so pressing is amazing. And so the idea that you have to see, so is it 23 different fabrics? Um, it's 24 different fabrics, 24 different African fabrics sewn, um, with the fabric across and then cut into bias tape and made into this. And she, as you see, she has it as embellishment on the sleeve in the flat as a double fold bias. Mm-hmm. And then she's folded it again, just like I did earlier today on that, that demo for the Bernina demo for the yes. Burnett 33. You then fold that in half by pressing, by pressing, mm-hmm. and then you can put it on this beautiful edge. And it really brings that fabric to life. Now, did I ask about this fabric? Do you have more of this? Um, yes, I do. Listen, uh-huh. y'all, when I walked in, I saw on one of the dress forms, this gorgeous, this gorgeous, um, Afro African samurai piece. Mm-hmm. And, but that one has a hood. Is that a hood or is that well, the same shawl collar? It's the, it's the same shawl collar this way, but if you turn it around, it's a hood. <gasps> so. Okay. So now that you said that, I'm going to need you to do that real quick for me. Um, because I like the idea of having garments that are two garments in one. So the idea that you can, are you saying this is reversible? Uh-uh, it's not reversible, but if I turn it upside down. Oh. <gasps> What she is, y'all, she has turned this jacket from up, right side up to upside down. When you turn the jacket upside down, it will make a hood. And you look like a Jedi. You look like a sexy black Jedi. I want to be a sex. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, I want to be a sexy black Jedi. And then I remembered who I was. I'm like, I'm that bitch. I already am a sexy black Jedi. Stitch, please. Stitch, please. I'm already a sexy black Jedi. Y'all here to see the sexy black Jedi? Show them. Show them. Okay. So this is one garment. This is what I like to call a convertible garment. If you wear it one way, it's a shawl collar. If you turn it upside down. You can be a sexy Jedi. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> and I have friends who have very strong affinities for certain fabrics. I have a friend who loves linen. I have a couple of friends that love denim. If you did that piece mm-hmm. using denim or a pre-quilted fabric and yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I get, <laughs> so tell me where can we get this? pattern or a tutorial to make well, ourselves into sexy jedis i would say coming in june coming in june will be um classes classes um, but right now we offer it as a custom piece so, oh so you you make it for uh-huh. people yes we do oh, okay mm-hmm. so if someone wants to learn they need to be patient uh-huh. and then you will they can take a class with you to yep. sign up mm-hmm. you all are going to want to do this yep. if you too want to be a sexy jedi <laughs> And honestly, <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> Beautiful. I oh, really, really just love that. So you. now you have been in this shop mm-hmm. for eight years coming on next year. Yep. So tell me what made you move to this location mm-hmm. and what has been some of the benefits about being in this kind of marketplace? 
Well, um, I'll start back a little bit. We started as a twice a year sale and um, here in the region. And so our, um, but our very first brick and mortar after that was in the international district. And we were there for two years. And what I would do is whenever people would come or call, I would jot down um, where I'm giving them directions from. And the number one place that people were calling from was Pike Place Market. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Pike Place Market. Can you tell me how to get to you? Okay. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. So um, that was that journey in coming um, coming to the market. When we came in, actually, um, that's a long story associated um, with that. But it was it was divine order in how oh, divine. That's wonderful yeah. that you were able to scale up. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but being here at the market has definitely been a blessing. It's gone on the eighth year. Um, come next month, April. Wow. And so. It has been an opportunity basically to hone the business yes, and get the opportunity to run a, a retail. I never, yes. never did retail before. Okay. Yep. And so coming off of my um, career in high tech, I wanted to get into my passion. Yes. And yes. so this has allowed me the opportunity to do so. That is wonderful. Yeah. And one of my questions was about the model of this mm -hmm. store. You are really shining a light on issues of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about like what our fabric stash is? Yes. You don't contact with, usually you typically don't contact with fabric manufacturers and buy a line or anything like that. Yeah. You are working with um, used and donated fabrics. Is that right? Um, actually, we're working with, um, well, let me just give you the model. Okay. The model is consignment. And so when we started our first um, um, events, they were called purge parties. Purge parties. And so, oh, go ahead. And we welcomed the community to take a look at your stash that you have. If you're not ready to purge, at least take the opportunity to organize it. Yes. And so with that, we would do it twice a year. We did it spring and the fall. Okay. And um, it was basically engaging the sewing community, the yes. artists, the teachers, you know, the designers, yes. that entire breadth of, um, of community to come and earn some cash for your stash. Cash for your stash. Mm -hmm. You know what I like yeah. about that is that I have so much stuff and the mm -hmm. idea that I could get even a fraction of the money that I paid, mm -hmm. you know, and also the way that sometimes fabric can amortize over time. Like you spent, you bought it for $25 a yard, but you've had it for 10 years and not touched yep. it. And so you're totally happy to get five bucks for it now. Yep. You know, that's wonderful. So believe it or not, we are near the end of our time. And I have to ask you the question I've been asking everybody lately mm -hmm. the the slogan for the stitch please podcast mm -hmm. is that we will help you get your stitch together what advice would you give for someone to help them give the, get their stitch together you already do it with the stash mm -hmm. so tell us i don't know if that i don't know if you have if that's what get your stitch together i usually ask people whatever it means to you mm -hmm. that's what i want to hear well the the entire business concept is that and so it is welcoming people to not necessarily um, put the items in the waste stream. And I'm not necessarily speaking of the stash of haulets. I'm speaking of their loved ones. Yes. And so when um, this is an extension of our legacy. Yes. And so whenever we get the opportunity to retain that. Yes. We welcome it. Wonderful. Yep. Wonderful. And on that note, Deborah Boone, thank you so much mm -hmm. for all of this, for helping us get our mm -hmm. stitch together, for opening your shop to the Stitch Please podcast yeah. and Afros thank and you. Audios. Thank you to Afros and Audios. Thank you to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Bernina USA and Burnett USA. Thank you to the University of Puget Sound um, for bringing me here for the Chisholm residency. Yeah. And Thank you to you all, the Patreon supporters and those who are not yet Patreon supporters. I am so glad that you were willing to share some of your time and attention with me today and come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together. Yes. You've been listening to the Stitch Please podcast. 
the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. We appreciate you supporting us by listening to the podcast. If you'd like to reach out with, to us with questions, you can contact us at blackwomenstitch at gmail.com. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do that by supporting us on Patreon, P A T R E O N. And you can find Black Women Stitch there in the Patreon directory. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the project with things like editing, transcripts, and other things to strengthen the podcast. And finally, if financial support is not something you can do right now, you can really, really help the podcast by rating it and reviewing it anywhere you listen to podcasts that allows you to review them. So I know that not all podcasts Um, directories or services allow for reviews but for those who do for those that have like a star rating or just ask for a few comments if you could share those comments and say nice things about us at the Stitch Please podcast that is incredibly helpful thank you so much come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together